Hey, good, good, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Com Rural Economy and Connectivity's uh, seventh meeting in 2019. Could I ask members please to ensure your mobile phones are on silent? Jamie Green has sent his apologies um, it, as he is unable to attend, and I'd like to welcome John Scott as his substitute. John, would you like to declare any interests uh, before we go into the meeting? Um, Thank you, convener, and thank you for making me welcome. Um, my interests are that I'm uh, a farmer, I'm part of a farming partnership, I'm a member of the NFU, I'm a founder member of the Scottish Farmers Markets, and various other interests to which I'd refer colleagues um, to in my register of interests. Okay, and I, I too just going to remind members, uh, because we will be coming on to an SI that deals with agriculture, that I am a, a member of a farming partnership. Um, and it's not necessary to make a declaration unless you want to speak, but if anyone else would like to make a declaration, Peter, you've indicated you would. Well, I will be convener. Uh, as most folk know, I'm a member of a farming partnership as well, but I have no intention of speaking on the SI, so we shall see how it goes. That's uh, it. I'm have a very small registered agricultural holding from which I derive no income. Okay. Thank you. We'll then move straight on to agenda item one, which is the European Withdrawal Act, uh, and this is the sift of four Brexit-related negative instruments as detailed in the agenda. Um, as this is the committee's first consideration of Brexit SIs, it's, I'm going to just uh, explain the procedure. The Brexit-related SIs under an agreed protocol between the Parliament and the Scottish Government, the League Committee has the opportunity, in advance of the usual policy consideration, to consider whether the parliamentary procedure allocated to the instrument by the Scottish Government either affirmative or negative, is appropriate. The League Committee can agree with the Scottish Government's view on the procedure uh, and rec or recommend it be changed. This is known as the SIFT. The Scottish Government has allocated the negative procedure to all four SSIs this morning. Is the Committee agreed that it is contempt with the parliamentary procedure allocated to these instruments by the Scottish Government? We are agreed. Therefore, we'll move straight on to agenda item two, and this is the consideration of five negative instruments as detailed on the agenda. No motions to annul have been received in relation to these instruments. Is the committee agreed that it does not wish to make any recommendations in relation to these instruments? No. Stuart, you would like to say something? Uh, yes. I'm, I'm not speaking to oppose the, uh, the, our support for any of these instruments, but I, I just have some questions, I think, committee might consider uh, it, it would wish to uh, put to put to uh, the government associated with one of them, which is the, um, the Fisheries EU Exit Scotland Amendment Regulations 2019. Um, I note uh, to Section 1 um, that uh, it, it has a commencement provision. And the commencement provision for parts one and two is that they come into force on the 28th of March 2019. Now, that is one day before the current uh, date that the UK would e expect to leave the EU. And I would just be interested to know whether if the 29th of March were to change, whether that has a consequence for this. I cannot see one but I think it's a proper question to ask. He then goes on and, and says that parts three and four come into force on exit day, and that's fair enough, that's whatever day it is. Um, but there are other parts to um, the, the bill from five onwards about which it says nothing on commencement. So again, I'd, I'd kind of just like uh, to be confident that uh, the, 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 when they will come into force beyond section five, since it's raised the issue of commencement. Um, and the, the, the other thing, I suppose, is in looking specifically at Section 4, because it's about reporting requirements rather than anything else, it's not a wider uh, issue, but it appears to leave at uh, a, in our, where it makes an amendment uh, at subsection 2 of 4 at uh, 42A7. Um, essentially, it, it's keeping the EU vessels as a separate category from vessels that are not EU. 
and not UK. And I just wonder why it's constructed that way. Now, except that what I've read in the advice uh, from the legal eagles, that the effect of this order is to leave things the same. But I'd just like confirmation that in constructing it in that way, it's not introducing a little difference from what I think the fishermen in particular might expect, and I myself might expect, and any of us might have expect looking at that. But it is a deeply technical instrument, which I, I don't confess to having got my mind around every part of it. Hence my question. Does anyone else uh, have any comments on that? So, um, what I suggest is um, that we write to the Scottish Government and raise the points that, that Stuart has, has raised this morning on commencement dates and definition of, I think, of nationality of vessels, to, to, to paraphrase it, um, and uh, seek their uh, clarification on these matters. But on the subject that we get clarification of those, which I think is slightly separate, um, is the committee agreed it does not want to make any recommendations in relation to these instruments apart from that? Yes. We are agreed. So we can move straight on to agenda item three, which is the European Withdrawal Act. And there are two notifications, and these are consent notifications in relation to two UK SIs as detailed on the agenda. <coughs> these cover animal health and control measures relating to African swine fever and legislation relating to wine spirits, genetically modified organisms, and cap direct payments at the point of EU exit. All these instruments are being laid in the UK Parliament in relation to the European Union Withdrawal Act 2018. Does anyone wish to make any comment on these? So my question to the committee, therefore, is does the committee agree to write to the Scottish Government to confirm it is content for consent for the UK SIs referred to in the notifications to be given and to note and request a response from the Scottish Government on the wider policy matters that have been identified within the briefing paper? We are agreed. Thank you. The committee will now move into private session.